In this video I'm going to return to the wonderful world of optical illusions and look at two more of these sensory oddities. I'll also explore why they fool us like they do. Let's find out more shall we? This first illusion is over a hundred years old. It's called the Herring Illusion after its creator Carl Herring. In the illusion we can see a number of black lines radiating outwards from a central point. There are also two green lines which lie vertically. The colour of the lines is unimportant, it just makes it easier for me to identify them to you. The question I have for you is, do the green lines lie parallel and straight down, or do they bow outwards? It looks, to me at least, as though they bow outwards. Well, let's have a look at what's happening when I remove those radial black lines. We can clearly see now that the green lines are perfectly straight and lie absolutely parallel to each other. So why do we see those green lines as bowing outwards? The explanation to this illusion is actually similar to the explanation to the Poggendorf illusion. It has to do with the way that we perceive acute angles. Our brains perceive acute angles as being bigger than they actually are. We tend to expand these angles to make them larger. The black lines intersect with the green lines and form acute angles with them. Our brains then expand these acute angles and our perception changes so that we see the green lines as bowing outwards. Ok, just before we get on to our second illusion, I make frequent trips into outer space inner space and through time. If you'd like to come with me on my journeys then don't forget to subscribe and we can go together. My time and space machine is bigger on the inside so there's enough room for everyone. Our final illusion for today is called the lilac chaser illusion. We can see here a number of slightly out of focus lilac discs arranged in a circle. In the centre of the circle is a black cross. If we stare at the cross in the middle I'll start this illusion going. It looks like each of the lilac discs disappears to be replaced by a green disc. It also looks like the green discs are moving round in a circle, processing in a clockwise fashion. There are actually two different illusions going on here. I'll look at each of them in turn, but I will look at them in more detail in future videos. The first illusion is a fascinating illusion called the Five Phenomenon. This is the illusion that the green circle that is moving around is actually moving. It isn't, it's just flipping from one location to the next. There's no actual movement involved. This illusion is caused by the fact that we retain each image for a split second afterwards. When a new image appears, it looks like the circle is actually moving rather than just changing position. The five phenomenon is employed in lots of situations. It's even responsible for our ability to see old-style, non-digitally displayed movies. The other phenomenon is the green circle itself. It doesn't actually exist. Let me show you. I'll slowly make one of the purple circles disappear, and we can see that there's no green circle hiding anywhere. This illusion is caused by what's called an afterimage. To understand how this works, we need to understand a little bit about how we see colours. In our retinas, there are millions of colour detecting cells called cones, and there are three different types of cones. Each cone can detect a different colour. There are cones that are sensitive to blue, green, and red light. Each colour that we see is caused by stimulation of these cone cells. Red light stimulates the red cones, blue light the blue cones, and so on. White light stimulates all three cones, and colours that aren't either red, blue or green stimulate a mixture of the cones. For instance, purple or magenta stimulates both the red and the blue cones, but doesn't stimulate the green ones. If we stir at an image of one colour, then after a short time, the cones that are responsible for viewing that colour in the image become overstimulated and lose sensitivity. This means that if I quickly change the image, the loss of sensitivity is maintained, causing the afterimage that we see. For instance, if I stir at something that's green in colour, the green cones are stimulated, but after a while, 
the green cones become overstimulated and then become less sensitive. So the green light is no longer stimulating the green cones. My brain knows that it's green and so fills in and I can still see that it's green even though it's stimulating the cone cells less. If I now change the image to a purely white one, the white light stimulates all the cones equally, but the green ones are still less sensitive, so only the red and blue cones are being stimulated. Blue and red gives us a purple afterimage. This effect is used in all sorts of inventive illusions, such as this US flag, and this Italian flag. Ok, so that's it for today's video, but until the next time we take a trip into the wonderful universe that we live in, thank you for watching.